Welcome to the next video in the silicone rubber series. Here we're going to be looking at silicone rubber compression molding process. Compression molding has been used to mold rubber parts since the beginning of the rubber manufacturing industry. It is one of the oldest methods still used to mold rubber parts. Let's have a look at the molding process itself. So compression molding is the process of placing unvulcanized silico material into the cavity of one or both halves of the mold. The mold is then assembled, placed into a heated compression molding press and cycled. Silicone is vulcanized through this process and a part is formed. While this molding process itself is somewhat slower than injection molding, it does yield quick turns on prototypes and R&D phase parts. It also has less costly tooling up front. The most cost-effective production method is to create high multi-cavity tooling. You can see the process over here on the right where we have the unvulcanized silicone as the blue section and the tooling as the shaded gray area. As the tool comes down, it compresses, it's heated, then pulled apart and the final product is produced. So what is put into the tool? This is known as a silicone slug. Silicone, prior to vulcanizing in the tool or machine, is similar to Play-Doh, which is pliable. Color is added to the silicone to match your requirement. The exact amount of silicone is calculated to mold each part. It is carefully cut and weighed into these slugs. The cut pieces are placed in the tooling cavity to ensure the right amount fills each cavity. You can see an uncolored, unvulcanized piece of silicon here. Let's have a look at the step-by-step -step process. Simple part designs typically only require a two-plate mold, which includes a cavity side and a core side. So step one, you'll be loading material into the mold, these silicone slugs we just talked about. Mold plates are then assembled and inserted into a compression molding press. Next, the press is clamped to a set pressure to produce high quality parts. And lastly, heat and pressure are applied for a given amount of time, allowing the silicone to spread throughout the mold cavity and cure. You can see a very simple mold example over here on the right. Next, the pressure is released from the press, which then opens and the compression mold is removed. Six, the plates are separated using hand tools. And lastly, the finished silicone part is removed. Let's have a look at the, the upsides and the downsides, or the benefits and downsides. So the benefits of compression molding. It has lower cost tooling. It has the lowest lead time. It's the easiest to prototype. And has the widest range of part sizes. Now the downsides of compression molding. It produces only intermediate tolerances. Parts may require deflashing does not all work well for complicated part configurations. Transfer or injection molds may be required. You can see here a hose which could well be part of a snorkel assembly over here on the right. This is a typical compression molded part. In the next video, we're going to be looking at the silicone extrusion process. Now, silicon extrusion is the process whereby silicon is forced through a shaped die, a stainless steel disc with a pattern cutout to produce cords, complex profiles, and cross sections. Don't forget to check out our other videos in this series, and you can contact us if you need any help with your projects in China. For more information on our services, visit our solutions page. 
Thanks very much for listening. My name is Paul Adams from Southeast, and I shall see you in the next video. Thank <music> you.